Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to Buzzwordathon. It is day one of the Buzzword Readathon. It's Monday. It's actually Monday night. I've had a busy day so far. Uh, didn't get a chance to film this intro or to start reading or anything until right now. So I'm finally going to go ahead and get started with my vlog. Uh, if you are not familiar with the Buzzword Readathon, I will go ahead and link Books and Lala's channel below and her announcement video for this round. But essentially, the Buzzword Readathon is a week-long readathon where you read books that all have one particular buzzword in the title. And this round, the word is night. There are a lot of books that seem to be coming out recently with the word night in the title. And so this week is all about knocking them off your TBRs. So I've got three books on my TBR for the week, and that might not sound very ambitious, but two of them are pretty big books. So I definitely think that that is ambitious enough for me, and they're all books that I'm pretty excited about. So the first book is one that I've had on my physical TBR for a very long time, and that I'm very excited to finally get to, and that is Night Film by Marisha Pessel. This is a very dark mystery thriller, from what I've heard, that has to do with, I think, this journalist digging into the murder or the death of uh, this girl who was the daughter of a famous horror director. Um, very interesting premise. Not sure where it's going to go from there. Uh, I'm also interested because it is told in mixed media format. So it has like emails and articles and web pages and police briefings and things like that all throughout it. It is almost 600 pages long though, so that's a little daunting. The second book that I want to read is actually one that I'm going to be listening to, and that is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. Uh, I'm going to be listening to it on script, like I said, listening to the audiobook, but this is the cover in case it rings a bell. Uh, this is another mystery thriller. This one was actually released this year and it's quite popular. I don't know much about the plot. I know that it has like a podcast element in it, which is why I'm very interested in the audiobook as well. Very curious to see if I enjoy this one as much as I've been seeing everyone else enjoy it. And then the third book that I'm getting to is a little bit of a stretch. No, it's a lot of bit of a stretch. I'm cheating. I am. <laughs> this third book does not have the word night in the title, but you know what? There is no readathon police. This is all for fun. And I didn't have any other books with Night in the title that I really wanted to get to, but I'm excited about this one. So I am going to be reading a book that has a word that rhymes with Night in the title. Um, and that's Long Bright River by Liz Moore. This is another mystery. I just realized that all the three books that I picked out are mystery thrillers, um, which I'm not mad at. <laughs> this is a mystery book. I have no idea what it's about, to be completely honest. Uh, I actually thought it was literary fiction for a long time until I recently saw, I think it was Gabby from Gabby Reads read this book and loved it. And so as I've been looking into it more, I've seen more and more great reviews for it. I'm thinking this could be a potential contender for the Goodreads Choice Award. Uh, mystery thriller category just because so many people have read it so I'm also kind of reading it in anticipation of that but you know it almost fit into the theme of this video so I'm just gonna include it so that is my third priority to get to this week tonight really is my best opportunity to get some reading done my husband is at a friend's to watch Monday Night Football my baby's already in bed and I thought Dancing with the Stars was on tonight, but I guess it's on tomorrow night. So uh, I should probably get a bunch of reading done tonight, get ahead so that I can watch that guild free tomorrow. That's my reading plans. I'm gonna go ahead and get started reading Night Film right now. And I will be back with an update once I am into it and have an opinion to share. Welcome to day two. I drew some inspiration from my book cover today with this red jacket. I made it 108 pages into night film last night and I would say that I am so far intrigued but I'm not hooked. Uh, so I was pretty right with the synopsis. So we are following this journalist who was very interested in this particular director early on in his career uh, because the director himself is very mysterious and secretive. And so this journalist was looking into him, had kind of put all his stuff away, and then 
suddenly um, headlines come up that the daughter of this director has turned up dead. And so that sparks this interest in the journalist again to dig up all of his old materials and to start looking into this director and his life. And he suspects that though um, they've ruled her death a suicide, he suspects that that might not be the case. So that is all that's really happened so far is the setup of the plot. It is my lunch hour right now and I'm actually thinking I'm going to go run an errand. I have to go to Target so I figure I might as well go now while I have time at lunch. Then I will come back and continue working from home for the afternoon and then we will see what this afternoon brings. So I will talk to you again a little bit later. Happy Wednesday, happy day three of Buzz Wordathon. As you saw, last night was a pretty low key kind of night, pretty uneventful. I ended up uh, obviously taking care of my baby, playing with her a little bit, putting her to bed, and then watching Dancing with the Stars. As I was watching, I was trying to read, but you know how that probably went. Uh, <laughs> I ended up reading, I think, 40 pages in the two hours of the show. And then after the show ended, I did read some more. So I got another 100 pages in. Tonight film. Uh, my goal for that book was to finish it in four days and it's been two. So I definitely have a lot of a lot more reading to do if I want to finish at that pace. So that means tonight and tomorrow I'm gonna have to really buckle down and read some more pages. But I was thinking of also maybe today as I'm working to start the audiobook of The Night Swim because I know that I can knock that out pretty quickly as long as I'm doing, you know, busy work or things that don't require my full full focus and I do have a bit of that to work on today. So I think I will put on the audiobook. We'll see how far I get. Uh, it'd be nice to also finish that. I guess by tomorrow would be great. So we'll see. That's the general plan at this point. I also today, I do have a video idea and it's something that I think could be relatively quick to film and upload. Um, so I'm thinking maybe during my lunch today I will film that and then tonight I can edit it. That's going to take away from reading time, but I guess this is kind of your behind the scenes look of a booktuber balancing actually reading, filming videos, filming vlogs, and still having a normal life. It's a difficult balance, but it's all fun stuff, all stuff I like, so happy with that. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with work this morning, uh, put on that audiobook, and I will check in probably at lunchtime when I have an update. listening to The Night Swim when I have a chance. I'm actually about 45% into the audiobook already. Um, it's only like a nine hour audiobook. So on double speed, uh, you know, you can knock that out pretty quickly. And what this book is about is, like I mentioned, it has a podcast element. So one half of the book is following this podcaster as she is following this rape trial and covering it for her podcast. She does like a true crime podcast and for the first time she's doing it on 
a case that is still open and still being determined. So the case is going to court and we are following her as she is digging into uh, more about the case and relaying what happens in court to the podcast and letting the podcast listeners determine for themselves if this guy is guilty of rape or if he's been wrongly convicted. And then the other half of the book is about this girl named Hannah whose sister died several years ago and it was deemed a suicide but she doesn't think that it was a suicide and she's contacting that podcast host in hopes that she can investigate the case further and maybe find some new evidence or reopen the case or do something so that she can hopefully get either some closure on the death or whoever killed her sister can be brought to justice. So it's interesting. Uh, I am going to be honest, I was pretty skeptical going in. I don't like true crime podcasts in real life. And so I was a little worried about a book focusing so much on the true crime podcast element. But so far, I am really enjoying the rape trial part of it. And enjoying seems like a weird thing to say about it. But I am invested in that portion so far. And I am a little curious about the other side of the story too. So it's good so far. Other plans, I am going to go ahead and film that video. I've been thinking about it so far this morning. I'm going to film it really quickly and hopefully I can edit it tonight. And I'm going to grab some lunch. I'm going to get back to work for the afternoon. And as usual, I will let you tune in for anything exciting that happens in the meantime. <music> Happy Thursday, happy day four of Buzzwordathon. You'll notice that today I am very casual. It's a very lazy day. I'm very tired. Uh, you might have noticed in the clips yesterday I looked like I was reading late into the night. I was, at least late for me, which is, you know, 11, 11.30. Uh, that's as late as I get. And I only made it to page 280 in night film. So my plans to finish this by today are being thwarted. And so let's you know what, let's reconvene, let's make a new plan, let's figure out how much I have to read every day in order to finish all of my books by Sunday. So Night Swim, I listened to a tiny bit more yesterday. I am right at about 50% through that book. So I should be able to continue listening to that today and finish it during the workday, which would be great. So we'll knock that off. And then Night Film is 587 pages long. I am on page 280, so that leaves 307 pages left, which means each of the next two days I have to read about 154 pages, which is more than I've been reading, but it's doable. Um, and then I can finish Night Film by tomorrow night so that I will have all day Saturday and all day Sunday to read Long Bright River, which is 480 pages, which means I have to read 240 pages a day for two days to finish that by Sunday. If I don't end up finishing Long Bright River in this readathon, in this video, that's okay. I am just gonna continue reading it and finish it by the end of the month. But obviously if I'm doing a readathon vlog, I would love to finish the book in the vlog so that I can talk about it. So that is the new plan. Night film, I don't have too much to add. It's a pretty good mystery. This main character that we're following has enlisted the help in a couple of younger, a younger girl and a younger guy. Uh, which I think is good because our main character is in his, I don't even know, 40s, something like that. Which I think is not only fun to read about as a reader to be able to relate to those characters, but also I think it makes a lot of sense in a mystery book to have multiple characters working together to solve a mystery. I typically don't enjoy books where our main character is being like a detective, is acting like a detective even though they have no formal background and they're solving these mysteries that are pretty unrealistic for one person to solve by themselves and they're making these jumps like oh this thing must mean this thing and must lead to this place but when it's three people working together it's a little bit easier for me to wrap my head 
around the fact that maybe one of them could come up with, you know, the next step. And then when you're putting your heads together, you are able to be a little more creative or work out clues a little bit easier. So I like that. And the mystery itself is still pretty compelling. I'm not, uh, you know, racing to finish this book as fast as I absolutely can, but I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm hoping there are some twists that come up soon or something that makes it a little bit more urgent. So far they're just kind of going clue after clue, location after location. Still really liking the mixed media elements of it. I love the articles and the web pages and things like that that add some context into the book. So yeah, that's my current thoughts on that book night film or the night swim i'm pleasantly surprised by how i'm enjoying that one as well the true crime podcast parts honestly i could do without just because it sounds just like a true crime podcast which i don't enjoy listening to anyway but i know that it's in there because so many people do love true crime podcasts so i'm i'm not mad at it i understand it but uh those just don't do anything for me specifically but the court case that our main character is following that the podcast is following that's very intriguing it seems i haven't read anything or heard anything that it specifically is reflecting like the brock turner chanel miller uh rape case but it sounds like it is reflecting that because it's a very renowned swimmer as the defendant so that i'm enjoying reading about it's hard obviously but and then the part where the girl has a sister who has died and she wants to look more into it there are definitely some missing pieces there still but i'm expecting it to all come together and for me to be impressed by the ending hopefully so that's my update for Thursday. Gonna get to work this morning. Oh, also, you saw yesterday that I got my video up, which is great. It was definitely fast to film and pretty fast to edit. I'm pleasantly surprised because I had to do a screen in screen sort of editing style, which is not something that I have experienced doing before, but it worked really nicely. So that is going up this morning, which I'm very happy about. There will be a link below. Uh, it's coming out before this video, so if you haven't seen it, I took some reading comprehension quizzes on books that I've read this year. And let's just say it didn't go well. So uh, yeah, very excited to post that video. So other than that, okay, I'm going to get to work this morning. I will check in with you probably around lunchtime. I don't always do something during my lunch hour. Um, a lot of times I'll just work through lunch, but I will check in with you then. <music> it is my lunch break as you've seen i've been running a couple of quick errands i got some lunch at dairy queen which is my favorite fast food restaurant i think dairy queen is severely underrated please let me know if you like dairy queen and their chicken strips specifically and their five buck lunches which is a sore subject for me and my husband because where we live it's different and it's actually 6.49 buck lunch instead of like five buck lunch but anyway I got a car wash because weather is gonna start getting cooler and I don't like getting car washes when it's too cold out um, and I went to the library as you saw I thought I'd show you what I picked up they are actually all books specifically for my October TBR which I will be making a video for I don't usually do monthly TBR videos but October will be special we'll see if you can guess what it is I kind of alluded to it earlier in this video I think but so the books that I picked up are He Started It by Samantha Downing, The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James, The Boy from the Woods from Harlan Coben, and A Good Marriage by Kimberly McCrate. Those are four of the books that I plan to be reading in October and they all have something in common, um, something presumed to be in common. So we'll see if anybody can guess that or else you will find out on I think October 1st is when I plan to post that video but yeah now that I'm I'm done eating lunch I'm done with all my errands I'm gonna go back home finish up the day I haven't been listening to the night swim yet today uh, I think I have two hours left so I should be able to do that this afternoon I plan to so I think I'm gonna put it on as I drive home go home finish up my work day, finish that book, and then I will be back hopefully with a review, a little mini review of The Night Swim.
Oh, babe is home. She loves looking at herself. Yeah. I have less than an hour left of the night swim, which is perfect because we can go for a walk later today, later tonight, and I will listen to it then. So that's gonna work out just fine. Definitely gonna finish the night swim tonight, but in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to playing with little baby babe. from our walk you know Missy baby fell asleep <laughs> it was a little bit longer walk than expected because as you saw I wanted to check out a little library just down the street well not just down the street a little ways uh, down our neighborhood and I wanted to check it out and it was a long walk it was also quite a bit hotter than I expected so I'm a little sweaty right now but I did yeah you laugh but he's taking out your tongue what are you doing I did drop off a couple of books that uh, I have not read and don't plan to read, actually. Uh, they were just taking up space, and I know I'm not going to prioritize them, so I might as well give someone else the chance to check them out and read them for free. <laughs> you are so silly. You're so silly. What are you doing sticking out the tongue? And then... While I was there, of course, I had an impulse come over me and I picked up The Vegetarian, which is a book that I've seen around but I haven't heard much about. Uh, I looked on Goodreads and Kayla from Books on Lala rated it two stars, so that's not a promising sign, but what are you doing? But it was at least a book that I had heard of, so I swapped for that one, got rid of three books, came home with one, so overall decreased the TBR by two, so that's good. Also, while we were on the walk, I finished The Night Swim and... I think I'm going to give it three stars. I really respect and enjoy what it did with the rape trial portion of the book. Um, I thought that was a great conversation and really shed some light on how victims are portrayed and how difficult it is to convict someone like that, uh, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. And yes, <laughs> cut it back. And so that was a very interesting part of the book. The rest of the book, uh, was just okay for me. The podcast element, like I've mentioned, was not my favorite. And then the actual mystery thriller part of it was lacking, in my opinion. It didn't have a lot of suspense, and there I really wasn't super passionate about finding out the other storyline, uh, what happened there. And it all tied together just fine. Nothing like that, but... Um... <laughs> but... <laughs> But from a mystery thriller standpoint, not my favorite. So I'm going to land on three stars, I think. <laughs> yeah, but I am happy to have one book completed for Buzzwordathon. I hope to get uh, a large chunk of another one done tonight. Okay, you probably should need the remote, huh? Yeah, let's probably put that down. I hope to get a large portion of night film done tonight. Husband's going to be watching football, so that leaves a lot of reading time for me. So I should get a bunch done. I probably won't talk to you again until the morning because I gotta get this one down to sleep, but I'll hopefully get some footage of reading tonight and anything else interesting that happens. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Hope you have a good night. It is Friday afternoon. Happy Friday. Happy day five of Buzzwordathon. Hope you guys have had a great week. I have had a busy morning, so that's why I haven't checked in until now. It's been a busy work day, uh, but I have a chance to talk to you now. So last night I made it to page 408 in Night Film. 
and it is dragging. I hate to say it, but it's just long. There is just a lot of description and our main characters are going place to place, clue to clue. There haven't really been any twists. There have been some, I guess you could call them reveals, but I'm losing interest quickly. <laughs> uh, so there's 180-ish pages left in the book. I should be able to finish that tonight. No problem, we don't have much for plans other than going out to eat with my family. So I should be able to finish. I'm hoping that the ending is good, but at this point, I kind of am just wanting it to end. Uh, so we'll see, the ending will make or break it, as a book's ending usually does. So that's the plan. I have a couple hours left of work to get through, and then we'll start the weekend. Saturday. Happy Saturday, you guys. Happy day six of Buzzwordathon. I just finished Night Film. Finally, this big chunker of a book I have finally conquered. Uh, I was reading last night, as you saw, and I got to 30 pages from the end and I was literally falling asleep as I was reading and I couldn't finish it. So I did not finish it last night. I just finished it this morning right now. And I'm pretty bummed because I really did not enjoy this. The first hundred-ish pages were super compelling. Uh, I was very interested in the murder aspect or in the mystery aspect, but as it went on, the mystery just dragged on and on. There were so many characters, so many locations, so many things just to keep straight. The culmination of it, the climax, just was not that fulfilling. So it just ended up feeling very unnecessary to me. I feel like this book could have been 200 pages shorter and I would have loved a different ending. A better ending, but it unfortunately did not work for me. So I'm disappointed about that. I am probably going to look at some other people's reviews of the book before finalizing my thoughts. Uh, right now I'm between a two and three stars, which is so disappointing, but I feel relieved to have finished it. Uh, it's definitely been an intimidating book on my TBR for a long time, and so I'm glad to have it read, and I am interested in Marisha Pestle's other books. Uh, Never World Wake sounds like a really interesting time travel -y, sci fi kind of book that sounds really intriguing. And then uh, her debut, Special Topics in Calamity Physics, I had never heard of before, but looking into it on Goodreads and stuff, it looks like her highest rated book actually. So I would also be interested in reading that because I believe it's also a mystery thriller type book. So my film is done. We've got some plans today, so unfortunately it's not going to be a full reading day, but they're a little bit later on. Uh, my baby is taking her morning nap right now, so I am actually going to get right into Long Bright River and start reading that uh, to hopefully get as far as I can in that this weekend. I'm hoping to finish it, but it's also a long book, almost 500 pages, so that's a lot for two days, but I'm going to do my best. So that's what I'm going to go do now is go start reading that book. two pages into this book and I'm realizing that it appears to not use quotation marks, which is a choice. It's an interesting choice. I don't really know why some books do this, but uh, I guess I'll see. I'll see how that works for me in this one. But just thought I'd point that out in case that's something that really, really bothers you in books. This is doing that. Good morning, guys. It is Sunday. It is day seven of Buzzwordathon. I unfortunately did not have much to check in with yesterday. Uh, yesterday morning, I did start reading Along Bright River. I got 68 pages in, uh, and then after that, the day got busy and I didn't get a chance to read or film anything. <laughs> so I apologize for that, but Sunday should be a day full of reading. So I should have a good number of updates on the book as I get through it. Uh, I do have over 400 pages before I'll be done with the book, so I don't know if that will quite happen today, but I will get as far as I can. And I, uh, to give you a little synopsis of the book, so Long Bright River follows, um, mainly right now we're following this woman, Mickey, who is a cop, and she's a cop in her hometown where uh, she has a sister a couple years younger than her, I think. 
uh, and her sister is in with the drug crowd, among other not so good things. And so Mickey kind of has to deal with that sort of dilemma where she is a cop and so she's obviously enforcing the law, putting away bad people, but she's also looking out for her sister, even though her sister is involved in these unlawful activities. Uh, so we're getting Mickey's perspective as she is a cop and dealing with the other crimes going on in the town. And then we also get portions of the perspective from when they were younger, uh, kind of throughout their childhood and teen and young adult years and kind of how they got here where their relationship is not exactly great. But like I said, they kind of have this thing, this mutual understanding that they're still kind of looking out for each other. Uh, and it is a mystery. I'm still figuring out exactly what that's going to be, but otherwise I've really been enjoying it so far. It's reading really quickly, which I like, and I'm liking the perspectives as they go back and forth. So definitely excited to get further into this and I will let you know what I'm thinking a little bit later. <laughs> about 7 p.m. on Sunday. It has been another full, crazy, busy day, but despite that, I have managed to read another 200 pages of Long Bright River. So I am on about page 270. That does mean there are still just over 200 pages left in the book, and I am going to continue reading this tonight, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here so I can get the rest of it edited tonight and uploaded tomorrow morning. Uh, so unfortunately to hear my full thoughts on the book, you will have to tune into my wrap up. Luckily, that's only a few days away. Obviously being 270 pages into the book now, I have a much firmer grasp on what the plot is and I'm still really enjoying it. I think it's read really quickly, which is nice, especially for a book that sort of leans towards the literary fiction type book. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of Runaway by Harlan Coben which is a mystery book that I read last year, which took a little bit longer for me to get into, but ended up being a pretty good mystery in my opinion. That book follows a dad, a middle-aged man, who is chasing, trying to find his daughter, going through like drug houses, sort of similar scenarios to what the sister, the cop sister in this book, is trying to find her sister in a very similar way. So I am enjoying it, uh, 200 pages left, so I'm hoping that there's more to come, more excitement, more maybe twists, more reveals and things like that. Uh, but so far I'm really liking it and I'm glad that I picked it up for this video, even if I'm not gonna be able to finish it in time. But overall, I think that I had a really great buzzword-a-thon. Uh, I love this read-a-thon for some reason. It's really fun to find books with a certain word in the title, even if they have nothing in common even though in my situation they did all end up to be mystery thrillers. But to recap, the first book that I ended up finishing is The Night Swim by Megan Golden. I ended up reading this three stars, and then I read Night Film by Marisha Pessel. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna give this one two stars. And then Long Bright River, to be determined, but so far I am really, really enjoying it. So no new favorites, no five stars yet, but I still had a really fun time. Fun time vlogging, and I'm excited for future buzzwordathons. Which, if you have tuned into Kayla's last announcement video, you know how that's gonna work next year. And I definitely plan on participating in a number of them as they happen. So, let me know if you guys participated in this round of buzzwordathon, what books you read. So, with that, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one.